Jerry, tell me when uh, when you discovered your love for cigars. I would have to say the first day, the, the day I graduated out of high school. And I say that um, my mom smoked my whole life. Um, Did she smoke cigars? No, cigarettes. My whole life, um, never thought anything about cigars, smell them as a kid. Um, the only reason why I wanted to smoke is because I saw her smoking my whole life. So naturally, my curiosity about smoking was there. She bought me my first cigar from graduating, and I've been smoking cigars ever since. I've been knee deep in the cigars ever since. Um, naturally, it starts off a little slow when you're 18, you know, first job, going for it, this and that. Cigars are fairly expensive. Um, but um, it grew more from one cigar every two, three weeks to, you know, one every other day to one a day to two a day to three a day to four a day. And that's where I'm at now, cigars. And how did you get your job here? That was a pure, pure fluke, you know. Um, I got I got a job here just to cover my cigar smoking habit, not to even just necessarily work here and be around cigars. Um, I had a regular nine to five job. I picked up this job just to pay for my uh, cigar smoking, and um, that was it. And then um, for some strange other reason, I got in trouble with the law. Got in a little trouble. Um, they didn't want my other job. They wanted to give me my raise. Um, with that said, I quit that job, went on a job search, started looking for other jobs, and I still had this. One day, the owner comes in and says, hey, you're my GM. You need to uh, change the locks and hire your employees. That's how I'm cool. That's how I'm in here. What was the job you had before this? Um, all the jobs prior to this were accounting and, and or sales. Um, bookkeeping, accounts receivable, uh, accounts receivable, accounts payable. Um, they were all just regular book counting, bookkeeping jobs, um, assistant bookkeeper, that kind of along those roles. Um, we have five humidors in here. We have the uh, four traditional humidors arranged in no particular order, just with the, uh, with many manufacturers of cigars. And then we have the one flavored humidor over here, uh, over to the left. Uh, Can you give me a description of a humidor? A humidor is something that holds humidity either for wine, cigars, or something that needs to keep to stay fresh or, 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 or fairly, uh, I, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess fair, fairly, uh, it needs to hold moisture for the most part. Um, I, if you get a cigar that is completely dried out, it's going to burn funny, it's going to crack, it's going to bust, it's going to burn hot, it's not going to taste the way it's supposed to be. And that's why having a humidor is important for your cigars. Um, these are large humidors. These are obviously commercial size humidors. These are made for the store. They house, you know, many different size cigars, many different cigars. Um, all in all, I say probably about, in all, if you want to do a stick count, probably about 15,000 cigars if I fill them, fill them all the way up easily. And not to mention the storage at the bottom, so I can hold more than that as well. Um, but for the most part, you have uh, we focus on uh, premium cigars, accessories in the store. Uh, we have beautiful humidors, cutters, ashtray, lighters. We have Bugatti, Lotus, Porsche, Zippo, DuPont, Zycar, Stan, um, Don Salvador. Um, um, tons of tons and tons of brands. And how do these humidors work? Humidors work by having a filter. You have a, a unit that is either either manually charged or, or, or electrically charged, and you place distilled water into an element. The element filters the water through a filter, blows it up into the uh, atmosphere, into the cigars, in which the cigars catch the humidity. They catch the moisture out of the air, and it keeps them um, soft and enjoyable to smoke. Um, that's pretty much what a uh, humidor does. And it's important because you don't want to get a box of great cigars and not have somewhere to store them and then go get them and they're dried out. That's the importance of a humidor. Say you get that box of Cubans, you know, you went to someone's wedding, you got that beautiful box of Cubans, you want to save that. And you want to save it by putting it in a humidor. Um, also, we have tons of, tons of accessories, cutters, cigar holders, uh, cigar travel doors, 
uh, uh, you name it, ashtrays, cigar lighter, uh, I mean cigar uh, lighter holders, you name it, we probably have it. Uh, Flasks, some music, travel doors, packs, uh, uh, postcards, t-shirts, hats, you name it, books, um, you name it, we have that. In this little small area here, we have our little manager lounge. Um, this is where the Laker game watches the Laker games, Raider games. I'm sorry for all those fans that aren't Raider fans, um, but this is where it goes down. Grab a cigar, we have Wi-Fi in here. Do a little bit of work for it, the phone calls to the cell phone. Do a little bit of work in here, have a stick and cheat. Um, but for the most part, this is where all the TV and, 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 and fraternizing goes on, if you understand. I started, believe it or not, I started like everyone else with uh, popular brands, Cohiba, Romeo and Julieta, Monte Cristo. So that's what I started off at. That's the only thing I knew of when I first walked into a cigar shop. Uh, Cohiba Red Dots, those puppies right there. The, these are Churchill's, that's what I started off on. Not, the, not necessarily the best or the worst cigar, but you wouldn't know if it's your first cigar in the world, you really wouldn't know. Um, we're just purely talking about brand name and association of brands and manufacturers at that point when I first got into cigars. I didn't know what to expect from a cigar. I didn't know what was a good or a bad cigar. Um, it's something that you have to uh, you, you try and learn. It's like going to the bar the first time. What do you actually really uh, uh, get to order? Is it a beer? Is it wine? Is it uh, hard alcohol? Is it scotch? Is it tequila? You have to sample a few different things before you figure out what it is that you want at a bar. Even though you may like many of those things at the bar. Um, but for the most part these days, I'm smoking a lot of the newer boutique cigars. I still smoke uh, some of your traditional cigars like Ashton, Oliva, Aurora's, Rocky Patel. Rocky Patel's a boutique company. That's something that he's relatively new. But I, I still smoke some of your, 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 your favorites. Um, what I try to stay in, I try to stay in the loop of knowing what's new and hot and what's fresh and good. Um, My Father by Don Pepin, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful smoke. Um, Nicaraguan um, manufacturer, Don Pepin actually uh, uh, defected from Cuba, migrated to Nicaragua, took his seeds, his practice, and his, 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 uh, his skill to Nicaragua, came up with his own line, now producing world-class cigars uh, from Nicaragua. Can you so, take a look at that cigar? Sure. Come on, this one. My father, that's the Rebusto My Father. They come in Rebusto, a Toro, a Torpedo, and a Lancero. The four sizes at the moment, but beautiful smoke. Definitely eat your dinner. Definitely eat your dinner. It's definitely a, a midday dinner cigar. It's not an early morning cigar. Even for the cigar smokers. Full flavored, full body. Well, let's say full flavored, uh, medium body, too full body. Yeah. What are the different flavors of, of the different bodies that you just mentioned? You have a mild, you have a mild to medium, you have a medium, you have a medium to full, and you have a full, which are five categories to describe the, the actual uh, taste and strength level of a cigar. Does the color of the wrapping of the cigar tell you about the full body? The wrapper, the wrapper actually does have a huge, it has a huge, huge impact on the strength and the taste of a cigar. I wouldn't say it has about 55 to 65 percent of the taste to why you might like a cigar is the wrapper, about 55 to 65 percent. Um, with that said, a Maduro wrapper, you can have a broadleaf Connecticut and that's a Maduro wrapper, you can have a traditional Maduro wrapper and they're both dark, but one be mild to medium, another one just be full. All depending on the blender. Hey, give me the, uh, tell me a little bit more description of the Maduro. Maduro is something like this guy here. That's a CX, uh, uh, excuse me, a uh, MX2, meaning it's a double Maduro wrapper no uh, binder and just filler. Um, this is a Nicaraguan cigar, but it's a very dark, leathery looking cigar. Very dark, complex tasting. Usually, usually, generally speaking, if it's just a pure Maduro, not a broadleaf Maduro, it's generally speaking uh, gonna be a middle to full body smoke. Complex tasting. How would you describe complexities such as 
Uh, complexities can range from simple, something being very simple and mild and earthy, to something having leathery, nutmeg, uh, uh, cinnamon, and uh, leather notes. That might be a very complex, full body smoke. Tourism Macanudo might be just a mild, earthy tasting cigar without any other complexity notes. It won't change. The cigar won't change from the beginning to the middle to the end. Cigars have a beginning, a, beginning, a middle, and an end. Some cigars you smoke it all the way through, it doesn't change at all. Some cigars you smoke the beginning, you hate it, you smoke the middle, you start to love it, and be, before the end, you, you're, in, you're in love with the cigar. So it all depends on what, 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 what kind of leaves a person are into, and that's what's going to determine what kind of cigars we like. But the cigar is Macanudo. Macanudo is a world famous, very, very popular cigar. You get that cigar at a liquor store, uh, a grocery market, just a mild, easy-going cigar. Something I recommend for the first comers. It's, it's, it's very easy-going, earth, earthy uh, cigar. Not very expensive. Costs you anywhere from five to ten dollars max. How do you decide which brands of cigars that you're going to carry in the store? Mm. Very interesting question. Um, I say that because uh, we have retailer events once a year. Once a year, we uh, all the retailers, you know, migrate to a certain location in the United States where our retailer event is held, and we pretty much do cigar tasting for a week. And with that said, we determine by cigar tasting what we're going to carry and not carry, also by manufacturing. Retailers events work in a such manner in which all the retailers throughout the whole United States come together and we all meet and congregate, we meet with sales reps and manufacturers, sample different blends of cigars that may be new or different lines that we don't carry in our stores or have not tried to bring into our stores yet. We assemble them there along with accessories, alcohol and all the other toys that come in uh, cigar aficionado that are part of the cigar world. Um, pipes, snuff, chew, all that stuff is there. Anything tobacco affiliated is there. Um, zigzags, you name it, it's there. And with that, you can determine what you're going to carry in the store, the cost, how many, and how well it sells. It's going to also be a determining factor. We may order one or two boxes of a cigar before it has been for you if we don't think it's going to sell. Uh, and we'll let the, the customers dictate to us what they want as well. Um, we may get guys to say, hey, hey, I want uh, Monte Cristo size A in your store all day long. And with that said, we'll bring it in during that event. We'll be coming here and that. Um, and if it's something we don't carry on a regular basis. Um, but the retailer event is a big, big group of guys that sit around, smoke cigars, and joke around over cigars, and eat and smoke, and conduct business with cigars. That's pretty much what a retailer's event is. Play that course because of the cat things and how dry it looks, how nice it looks. We try to say that they're because of customers, it's my favorite type of mix. But the question again was, we have another store in San Jose, we use some cigars that you don't sell over here, and the answer to that is yes. I would say every single cigar shop in America carries something different from the next cigar shop. We all carry some of the same brands, like your Altidus cigars, like your Cohiba, Monte Cristo, Mac and Ludo, Roman Julieta, El Rey de Mundo, a lot of the Hoya de Monterey. A lot of those cigars are produced by uh, the same manufacturer in which all the cigar shops carry. Not all cigar shops carry, uh, we all carry the same stuff, but we all don't carry everything identical. What I mean with that, one guy may have Opuses, another guy may have BSGs, another guy may have Padron Anniversarios. With that said, you still need to get out and visit and frequent other tobacco shops in your local area. Meaning, you need to have four or five shops in your back pocket that you can go to or you can go to. And they know you on a regular basis. Um, and that's how, I, that's how I do it. I recommend it to everyone that's into cigars to have a few shops. Don't just get set on one shop, irregardless of how close you are to that tobacco and escape. Um, for the most part, we all have different products. Get out and visit all your local tobacco shops. What are the special products that you have here? 
Special products that I might carry here might be something like the Aurora Pura, which uh, just replaced the Anya. It's a $40 stick. Um, it was harvested in 2005. Um, so the cigar has about three and a half, four years of age on, on, the, on the cigar itself, even before it was shipped. Um, it comes eight to a box. It is a Dominican Puro. All, all three parts of the cigar are from the Dominican Republic. That might be something not every single shop has. Also, something else that not every single shop has might be my uh, Ebony cigar glass and cigar holder. Those are specialty items. Or the oldest DuPont, that's another specialty item. That lighter takes six months to make, and then it was painted by hand. Everything is done by hand with that lighter. Um, that lighter is about thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars um, That might be a specialty item. Um, what is the most expensive cigar that you have? Um, at the moment, Opus, limited edition 2006, that cigar is $75. Um, it's, it, it's $75 for a few different reasons. It's a non-production cigar. What that means is not a cigar you can go out to every single shop and buy. Casa Fuente, where you can get any Fuente product, any Opus, does not have the cigar there for sale. Generally, you get these cigars when you go to their $1,500 dinner, they give you that, that cigar as a dinner smoke. Then you have the age on the cigar. It's from 2006 to 2009 now. So you have the additional age on the cigar, along with the time that they let sit in the age of it. And then you have the rarity of Opus brand itself. It's not in every single cigar shop, nor will it ever be in every single cigar shop. This Opus cigar brand in line is a limited quantity produce the cigar to begin with. Hence the price point in which you can get a regular open set between $15 and $30. What is the least expensive cigar that you sell here? Least expensive cigar I sell here is $1.99. It's a flavored cigarillo. It's just a mild cigar with flavor added to it. It may be rum, it may be cinnamon, it may be chocolate, it may be any flavor, but it's just a mild cigar. The same mild cigar dipped in different flavors. That would be the cheaper cigar than I have. What's the most difficult part of this job? I would say dealing with uh, multiple personalities, irregardless of what they want, even though they're in here because I can help them, but just dealing with uh, the needs and wants of many different kinds of people. That's the hardest challenge that I face on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, 